Hello, ladies and gentlemen. W welcome to the seventh annual Kosciuszko Chair Spring Symposium. The weather, as usual, is great. I don't know why. I always wish for rain, so there would be more bored people coming. I see that you're ready to enjoy your food. Well, news flash: the food won't be here for another four grueling hours. And you'll have to suffer through a number of presentations that excite only me and a couple of other masochists. They all pertain to, well, Kościuszko, the Kościuszko Chair's mission, and to uh, our Intermarium project. Uh, Maria Juczewska, our Director of Operations, will be um, the MC. Sometimes I'll chime in and, and comment, that's our way. Or she will comment uh, if she gets all worked up and uh, foaming at the mouth, hopefully not. I will uh, announce all the participants as we proceed. Uh, uh, for now, I'd like to make my own little parish announcement. Namely, we'd like to officially unveil um, Center for Intermarium Studies here at IWP. Uh, to put it in human terms, non-bureaucratic terms, its, um, its function is to serve as an academic hub to promote the intermarium, that's the lands between uh, Black, Baltic, and Adriatic seas, well, it promote it in its unity and diversity at a number of levels. The uh, objective we have in mind is naturally to influence the imperial elites here in Washington, D.C., uh, to inspire the intermarium elites uh, in the old countries, inspire them for friendship and understanding uh, among themselves, because the most um, salient feature of those people is that they hate each other in the lands between the Black and Baltic and Adriatic Seas. The only exception is the Poles and Hungarians, and that is completely rational. So there's no good reason in terms of politics for the Poles and Hungarians to love each other, and they do. Uh, we will also foster people-to-people -people diplomacy. We are not a governmental organization, so we, can, we can't pursue public diplomacy which is targeting populations over the heads of their governments. But we will do everything we can to influence uh, the official factor in Washington, D.C. to do so. Because without the American leadership, we cannot expect the Intermarium Project to succeed. Just like the United States was instrumental in uniting Central and Western Europe during the Cold War. And it would have fallen to Stalin and the communists without America. So now, American leadership has been extended eastwards. And those people there in the rest of Europe need the United States. One of our broader objectives is to stress the importance of the transatlantic connection and to show that America's tradition extends to Central and Eastern Europe, not just to Western Europe. Afterwards, uh, after, uh, after all, we would have to eschew looking at anybody but the English, maybe the Welsh, perhaps the Scots, and forget about the Irish. America comes from Europe. Those are the foundations. And the so-called ethnics contributed mightily to it from the end of the 19th century. It is important to stress also because of the demographic changes, not only in Europe, but also in the United States. As we become more global, as increasing numbers of American citizens trace their roots to Asia, Africa, 
Latin America and elsewhere, they're forgetting that what is happening is that they have entered a framework set up by the WASPs and strengthened by the ethnics that is central in Eastern Europeans. The key to America's success has been that the successive waves of immigrants adhered to the paradigm set up by the WASPs. So, metaphysically speaking, that is also a part of our mission to stress the importance of the transatlantic relationship of the European roots of America and of America's mission to uh, maintain its tradition at home and abroad. Okay. Now, in a little bit more academic way, uh, the Center for the Intermarium Studies proposes to extend IWP's academic offerings and analytics to include the strategically crucial geographic pivot of history. The area between the Baltic and Black Seas, formerly dominated by the Soviet Union, in the context of newly resurgent Russia, EU realignment, competing energy interests, migrant crisis, Islamist threat, information warfare, etc., the project would focus on much needed analysis of political events and rapidly evolving risks facing the West and NATO in this crucial region between East and West. The purpose of the Center for Intermarium Studies would be to build on IWP's traditional strengths and regional expertise to address the practical academic need for political analysis and objective risk assessment in a strategically, strategically important and notoriously misrepresented area on the borderlands of the Western world. If you recall Samuel Huntington's thesis of the clash of civilization, which was plagiarized from Ada Bozeman, who in turn plagiarized it from Professor Felix Konechny, Ni neither knew about that. Uh, the fault lines of civilization run through the intermarium. A student of mine complained that he bumped into some people in DC who should have known better, foreign policy experts, who assumed that because he was a Slovene, he had to be orthodox. They never heard about the Roman Empire. Those are the limes of civilization. Slovenes and Croats are Latin Christians, Catholics. The Byzantine Empire ended on Serbia. Those are some basic things that must be repeated over and over again so that the elites would be able to make informed decisions. Drawing on IWP's unique understanding of international realities and commitment to scholarship tested by proxies, the program would enhance existing academic offerings and focus on identifying in and interpreting observable threats in order to offer both theoretical understanding and actionable intelligence to its students. And of course, we'll have um, this will be an umbrella structure, uh, which will include the uh, 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 the Kościuszko chair in Polish studies as the pivot. And uh, we are open to setting up other outfits. We are very happy to have a chair in uh, in uh, Ukrainian studies or Hungarian or uh, Slovene, anything. Anybody who wants to come with an offer, we're certainly very open-minded about it. As far as the talent, we will have Dr. Lanchowski and uh, Dr. Schindler has agreed to join us. Dr. Gurka, who is now on hiatus, so it's off the record, since his background includes that part of the world, he'll be involved most uh, certainly. And anybody from the outside, Dr. Cannon always works with us. She may as well move here. Uh, 
because she's always around. I would like you to note that scholars and practitioners involved with us bring to the table a unique set of skills. We are not going to study gay butterflies in the Romania's Carpathians. We will study statecraft, all tools of statecraft, culture, history, everything that pertains to the intermarium and its place in American uh, imagination and in American foreign policy. And I would like to, as always, call on you to support this effort in whatever way you can, including volunteering to woman or man our events. Thank you, and once again, welcome. And thank you, thank you. Uh, without much more ado, uh, I'm going to go through some maps so you'd see it. Here is the intermarium. Uh, see, this is the Habsburg domains. Here, is it, here it is presently. Here is nostalgia for the Soviet Union, but only among the Russians. It's still at 56% now. It dipped a little bit, but never lower than 49% during a wave of demonstrations. Here's happiness in the former Soviet Union. The most unhappy of them all are the Ukrainians. You, you have portion of the intermarium included. The Balts seem to be happy, all right. The Russians are very happy too. This is what Eastern Europeans think about NATO, Eastern and Central and Central Europeans. The happiest are the Poles and Kosovo. Yes, there is mild happiness in Hungary, Romania, and the Baltic states and Czech Republic. Slovakia and Georgia are tepid, but they're still, they still believe that NATO is about protection. Everybody else, including Serbia, uh, thinks NATO is a threat. Please note that NATO members, Bulgaria and Greece, have no opinion, meaning they don't care. They don't think NATO plays any function. Here's defense spending. Poland is, and Estonia are the only ones in the intermarium, and now Greece, that devote enough of the GDP as per agreement. Everybody else doesn't care. We should chastise Luxembourg, for instance, because it only devotes that great power 0.44% to defense. Uh, here is a very incomplete map of irredentist and autonomous movements in Europe, but that includes the intermarium. Please note conspicuously that the Polish minority uh, in Lithuania, which is very irredentist, and in Belarus, which is very autonomous, and in Ukraine are conspicuously missing, but we have the Silesians marked as autonomous in Poland. Okay, this is where we have NATO troops deployed. Okay, Romania and Poland. And there are now some in the Baltics. And we can now swap for Dr. Schindler, who will have a nicer message for you, so... Please welcome Dr. Schindler, just very quickly, she's our baby, who went on to get a PhD elsewhere. Don't frown if you don't like that we don't have a PhD program yet, all you have to do is donate 10 million dollars and we'll have it. It's just a question of money, we have the talent on both sides in terms of uh, professors and um, uh, students. She is more or less classified, so I don't really know what to say. Please welcome. <laughs>